Awareness is everything. The ability to look at yourself realistically and understand you're saying, see things as they are, see the world as it is. It begins with yourself, seeing yourself as you are, right? And seeing that your adult self that's so confident and, and has this, you know, this way about the world is covering over some wounds, some vulnerabilities from your deep childhood. Not everybody, but for a lot of people, that's the case. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to, to rip away the skin and look underneath and see that wound and touch upon it and then kind of analyze it and sort of see the patterns in your life before you can begin to break them. It's kind of like a circle. You can imagine human life as a circle, social life. To be a human means in any time period, the culture that we live in creates a circle. And in that circle is a limit to what you're, you're allowed to believe in, what you're allowed to think, your behavior. There are codes and conventions and rules that we all ascribe to. They're not the same as if they were in ancient Egypt 3,500 years ago, but back then they had a circle. It was just a different circle, right? Okay, so you're not supposed to think these thoughts. You're not supposed to do this, this, that. This is the circle that we live in. Just outside that circle is the realm of the sublime. It's something that we're not really ever supposed to think about, or we're not really supposed to ever do. It's something that's filled with a slight transgressive energy, a level of excitement, because deep down inside in human nature, we don't like limits. We rebel against them. We want to be free. Our spirits are yearning to be free. And that sense of these are codes that you have to abide by is very restricting. It feels like a prison almost. So we're inevitably attracted to things outside of that. And that is the realm of the sublime. And it's incredibly exciting. It contains so much energy because in that circle, all of your energy is kind of crushed and compounded inside of you. It's kind of, you have to feel this, we have to do this. When you let go and you go out and explore outside of it, it's like suddenly you're tapping into something that's in the cosmos, incredibly energizing. It's what Maslow called a peak experience, right? Okay, so the ultimate form of going beyond that circle is death itself. Death is the ultimate limit, obviously, to our lives. And people who have peered through that door, because the word sublime literally means up to the threshold, that's the Latin, up to the threshold of a door. So imagine that circle has all these little doors in it, and you're peering through it. This is something that I haven't thought of before, right? Um, the ultimate door is death, right? And people who've peered through that door have had a near-death experience a little bit, to some degree. It changes you. It's like that is the biggest blast of the sublime that you can get. That's the strongest form of the drug imaginable. You no longer look at being alive anymore the same way. You no longer see the trees, the birds, the, the people that you love in the same way. Do you Everything think it's universally that people see something better than they did before? No, it's not true. It's a good, good point. There have been studies of near-death experiences. I don't remember the percentage, but there is a percentage, the smaller percentage, that has a negative experience. It's very painful and ugly and demonic and hellish. And no, they're not having this. So thank you for bringing that up. That's true. But most people, for most people, it has this effect where, uh, and there are reasons why the people have the hellish view. There are other things going on. It's not, that's just not normal. Um, is, you know, you're, you came very close to death and you're alive. So everything has a different meaning to you, right? Things that you took for granted before no longer have that same sense. And there are other things that go on. Well, anyway, the, to get to my story here, I wrote that chapter with those ideas in mind. And then two, three months later, I came this close to dying myself. So what had been this intellectual abstract argument about near death, sublime, blah, 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 became very real, right? I was in a coma. I was driving my car. If my girlfriend hadn't stopped, made me pull over. If the medics hadn't come, quickly, I would have permanent brain damage or I would be dead. I came very close. I was in a coma. I didn't have like visions of, of you know, angels, etc. and all the other things that people sometimes claim they have. But I had some very strange things, some feelings in my body that it, not as often anymore, but I still sometimes get a feeling that my bones were kind of melting from the inside. Whoa. It was kind of like a sort of dissolving. What was solid about me was dissolving. 
right? And then a sense of a very, it's only for a brief second, and sometimes I'm not even sure if it's true or not, but I had an image of me up above looking down and I had, I had died and people were talking about me, right? I'm not sure whether my brain in memory is playing a trick on me, but I seem to have that recollection. Anyway, I meditate every morning. I've been doing it now for 11 years, for Smart. like 40, over 40 minutes. It's a, a ritual that if I don't do, I feel extremely depressed, something's wrong. Okay, and when I'm meditating, I become deeply aware. These thoughts start coming up, they bubble up, you can't control them. You become deeply aware of your ego, of certain patterns in your thinking, of certain anxieties, of certain kind of neurotic thought patterns, right? You're seeing it before your eyes, it's floating there. This is your ego, Robert, it's going here, there, and there, you can see it. And now, when you're in that state, you can almost see it as if it's another person. And it's very powerful, and it's very liberating. Now, in the case of someone who's dealing with a deep wound, I don't know if you can go, you can't go there like tomorrow and do this. I'm a realistic person. I'm very practical. I don't want to advise people something that's not going to happen. It's something that you're going to have to, it's a life skill that you have to build the, 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 the power to, to take, take a step back and look at yourself with some distance and see that ego as if it's over there, it's floating in front of you. It's giving you signs of who you are, you know, you can develop that and it's very powerful and it will give you the ability to look at your own wounds objectively but you're never going to reach a, a, a degree of 100% detachment. Me, who has been practicing this for many years, I still get caught up in those wounds. I still get caught up in my ego. It's just a matter of degree that that's all I'm talking about. Because I have discovered in my meditation that the way the brain works is it's continually telling us stories about the world, about ourselves, about the way people are, and I don't mean stories in, it's literally what I'm saying. It's like constructed like a story. It has a narrative arc to it, right? This is what happened to me. And, and, and the story is constructed and this is the result. And the, what the story I'm telling myself might not be the correct story at all, right? So being able to understand what really happened, what is the, actually the story that, that occurred there is extremely important. And so, you're hitting on the bedrock, which is extremely fundamental, which is, do you believe that you're capable of change? Do you believe that good things happen when you go through a process of learning and taking steps? Do you believe, going back to your belief, that you can actually get out of your patterns? Because you can be fooling yourself, you can be bullshitting, you can be saying, yeah, I kind of do. But deep down inside, you don't really want to do it because, believe it or not, your bad patterns give you a degree of comfort, right? It's something that you know. And to get out of them, you're suddenly thrust into the unknown, and that could be very frightening. So you could be holding on to these bad patterns. So the belief that I can change, I can actually do something different in my life, I can actually recreate myself, I can actually learn things. I can actually rewire my brain because the brain is incredibly plastic. Even at the age of 40, 50, you can change your career. You can learn new skills. You know, I've reached 60. I'm constantly learning as well. The brain is insanely plastic. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you have the possibility to change yourself, to alter your patterns? That's probably the single most important thing right there. And to get people to believe that, as I said, there's two levels. There's the people who will shake their head, yeah, 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 they'll read mastery, but it won't mean anything to them because they're afraid of the change. They're comfortable with a degree of failure, I hate to say, because if you don't try things, you never have to deal with the responsibility, the pain of failure, right? So you don't really want to change deep down inside. You don't really believe in Tom's number one bedrock belief, right? You're kind of fooling yourself. So it's not a fairy tale. It's not a bunch of uh, a myth that we're creating. It's true that you have the power. The brain, if you just understood this one thing, that the brain is like a landscape. It's like a landscape out in the world that you see where things can be lush and tropical or they can be completely arid and dead. You create that landscape yourself. You create the brain that you have. 
by the degree of how you're open to experience, by the degree of how much you learn, by the degree of how many different sources of information you take in, you can create this incredibly alive brain that's very creative, imaginative, and how much more fun will your life be if you're open and, and you let things come in, new ideas come in. So it's up to you. You're the one that's creating your misery. It's creating your patterns. It's, and it comes down to that bedrock one belief that you just mentioned. 